Hey, Seth David here from the world famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated, bringing to you another edition of Nerd's Guide to the Galaxy. This time we're talking about how to create your own AI based accounting system with Chat GPT. Now, I'm sure by now you've heard the buzz about Chat GPT, and a lot of you are probably ignoring it because it sounds a lot like many other things that have come before that everybody got on you know, on the buzz about, jumped on the bandwagon, and it kind of came and went and faded. Uh, this is not one of those things. Chat GPT, I can assure you, uh, is here to stay. Uh, Google is already working on a competing product called Lambda. From what I've read, it's not available to everyone yet. But as soon as I saw ChatGPT and I saw the potential for how this is a better way to search for things than Google is, to search for information on things, um, that uh, Google would have to be jumping on this bandwagon. So I'm just keeping my eyes out because, you know, Google... Definitely is going to want to compete with this. Uh, there are rumors and articles I've read that Microsoft is looking to purchase chat GPT. They've already got ridiculous valuations like $10 billion or, or more, something something like that. Uh, chat GPT, by the way, is created by a company called OpenAI. So in order to get access, you'll need to create an account on OpenAI. Uh, you'll see the information in the write-up to this video. So if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to check the description for the link over to my website, to the blog, where you'll see the write-up, and the write-up lays it out exactly where to go to set up your account with OpenAI. And once you do that, you'll be able to use ChatGPT. Now, as it turns out, when I sat down to make this recording, and this comes up a lot, they are at capacity right now. This is because so many people are trying to get onto the service and use it. So this is a common occurrence. Don't fret. Just uh, you know, keep checking back and hitting refresh. Uh, I'm usually able to get in at some point during the day. Uh, and they're making improvements constantly. Like initially, it wouldn't remember any of your chats that you've had. And so you'll see I took screenshots to be sure I'd be able to show you what I want to show you here. Um, but they're getting better. And, and actually, once they started rolling out the ability to preserve your chats uh, all the old ones that I did were back. So clearly it's all being logged. They just are working on, you know, how to deliver that. And again, with all this uh, traffic, it's uh, it's taxing their capacity and I'm sure taxing their ability to add and deliver additional features, right? So I actually stumbled on ChatGPT initially based on an article I'd read on probably Forbes or Fortune or something like that because that's usually where I get this kind of information from. And then I stumbled on this tweet from Jason Stats on Twitter. A lot of you know him at Jason Stats CPA. Uh, and so he, he had written this. So I trained ChatGPT to become an accounting system and I showed my wife a non-accountant. She literally sheeked. Here's what I did, right? And I went through his tweets and I looked at that and I said, okay, I want to try and get ChatGPT to do the same thing. And at first I wasn't having any luck, right? So I was, I was just, I didn't really look closely at what Jason had done. I just kind of got the gist of what he was doing and I went and tried to do it on my own. And uh, I kept getting the same kind of canned response saying, you know, we can't do that. Right. So then I went back to Jason's thread and then eventually I actually reached out to Jason. I replied to him and said, hey, and I showed him this very screenshot and I said, I'm not having any luck. Like, what did you do? And he gave me just the exact language he used to kick the thing off. And then it worked perfectly. Right. And so you can see in my screenshot here that uh, uh, I started making it happen. So and it was just look, this is not going to replace QuickBooks online yet, but I certainly hope that my friends at Intuit are watching this and seeing and thinking about how can QuickBooks Online be built out to do something like this. Because the idea here with ChatGPT is I can ask it things in very natural, simple language, and ChatGPT just goes and puts it together, right? Now, you have to be, you want to be as specific as you can, but the point is I don't necessarily even need to know debits and credits, Right, So I, I wrote up here, you're going to prepare the accountant for a company named Bot Inc. With each prompt, I would like you to prepare me a balance sheet in table format and an income statement in table format. We'll start with the following opening balance. Wells Fargo checking 100000 Shareholder contributions 100000 So I kind of gave it the debit and the credit without calling it a debit and a credit. Right? And it, it gives it to me here. 
Okay. Now you can read, you can look at the screenshots. I don't want to waste 20 minutes of video reading what I did to you. I just want you to see this part, at least in the video, to prompt you to go. And if you, again, click over to the right up, you'll have links to this. So you can look at this very close up, right? I've got this sort of stored in Notion, as you can see. And you'll see how I evolved the thing as I went on, right? I'll just kind of scroll quickly through it. And obviously, I didn't love this format. So eventually I asked it to change the format. And so it, one attempt and I got this and I was like, nope, not what I'm looking for. And finally, I, I, I did it like this. Again, the more specific you can be, the better results you'll get. So I said, show the balance sheet table with columns as follows. Account type, comma, account, comma, amount. Right. And boom. All of a sudden now I've got something that looks a bit more like a balance sheet. Right. And I kept going and kept adding stuff in. OK. And then the one thing I want to show you that I did you know, that I want to make sure you're encouraged to go look for this when you're kind of scrolling through this yourself is eventually after adding some transactions and having it record them and having some success with that, um, first of all, I complimented it and I love how it just responds to that, right? Thanks for the kind words. Then eventually what I wanted to do was I wanted it to kind of write up a summary based on what it sees. So this is the part that really blows me away. Like everything up until now is kind of like, okay, cool, I get it. It's, you know, any kind of computer technology, um, it seems like would be easy enough to get it to be able to, you know, organize the numbers and things that we're doing. It's still pretty amazing what ChatGPT was able to do here. But wait till you see the, um, the write-up that it had me do, that I had it do. So here it is. I said, write me a summary of how Bot Inc. is performing based on the information above. So it remembers the history of that particular chat. Um, based on the information provided, it appears that Bot Inc. is performing well. The company has not yet incurred any expenses and has generated $10,000 in revenue from the services provided to a customer. The company has 100000 in shareholder contribution and has used some of this cash to purchase computer equipment for $5,000, leaving a balance of 95000 in its Wells Fargo checking account. The company has also recorded the amount from the services provided to the customer's accounts receivable, which is an asset. Overall, the company's financial position is strong with no liabilities and a healthy balance of assets and equity. I didn't tell it any of this. I just gave it the transactions and gave it the numbers and asked it to prepare the um, presentation. And uh, and that's what it came up with. Okay. Later on, I asked it to do it again. And I also corrected it. There was one subtotal that was incorrect. So it corrects it. It wasn't including the 10,000 of accounts receivable for some reason. And somebody emailed me about this because I had sent something out about this in an email that I sent out asking if I knew why <coughs> it made that mistake. I don't know. You know, I don't write the code. Um, I have no idea why, but it was easy to correct. Once I told it to correct it, it seemed to work. Although here we're back to the 10,000 being left out for some reason. So I think again, I had to, uh, you know, kind of evolve it to where it would see here. Now here we're back to, it's accurate. It's including the whole 10,000, right? So now let's get to the next write-up. Actually, I guess that was it. I think the I think that was the second time what you saw that I had asked it to give an evaluation. I had done it one time prior. I may not have included it here because that one was the one that was like really kind of mind-blowing. So let's quickly check in and see if I can get access. Um, nope. It looks like not. But here's the bottom line. I, I, hopefully this video is enough to get you inspired to check it out and play with it. There's so much more it can do. Um, what I also did, and I, this is included in the write-up, as I was kind of wrapping up my chat session, I was just curious. And so I asked ChatGPT, and I don't think I included it in here because it was sort of unrelated. Yeah, but it is in the write-up. You'll see it in the write-up. I asked ChatGPT as I was doing the you know the wrap up on this, and I was just curious, and it was a totally random thought and totally unrelated to the accounting example. I was just curious because obviously health is a big issue for me. I've been working out a lot for the last couple of years. I've lost a lot of weight, and and a lot of that has to do with my diet. And so I was curious. I asked ChatGPT to plan a meal for me based on the following specifications. I said 2,500 calories per day with macros broken down in the following ratios. Carbs 40%, fat 30%, and protein 30%, which by the way is a, a ratio that I've learned from my fitness coach uh, and it's been written up in books that has sort of been scientifically proven to maximize your body's ability to process everything from the fat it burns for fuel to repair muscle tissue to uh, efficiently burning off uh, or converting glucose and or, or carbs into glucose at a rate that's very healthy so that you don't spike your blood sugar and so on and so forth. It's like the perfect ratio to eat your food in. So ChatGPT, sure enough, let me uh, bring up the screenshot here, 
came up with a really sweet meal plan for the day. And I'll bring it right over here. And it's, you know, it's not perfect, right? So it didn't hit 2,500 calories, uh, but it came close. And I think at the bottom, it even recaps it. Total for the day, 1,632 calories, 204 grams of carbs, 71 grams of fat, 82 grams of protein. It says, note, this meal plan is just an example. It should not be followed without consulting a healthcare professional. So it's even kind of programmed in for them to cover their butts as far as uh, making sure nobody's going to come back and sue them and say, hey, you gave me bad advice, right? Uh, don't want that. But it, it gives you a, a perfect meal plan. And for some reason, I am having trouble getting this back down to size. There we go. So we can see the whole thing, right? And so, it, but it breaks it down: breakfast, then snack, then lunch, then snack, then dinner, uh, and then a dessert. You know, in the evening time after dinner. And by the way, if you're like me, and you know, where I have type two diabetes, um, I can tell you that from that side of things, that kind of a layout with eating with that exact frequency is the perfect way to keep your sugar balanced, so it doesn't spike and drop, and you know, and that's the kind of stuff that causes us to crave, you know, the really bad kind of foods that we tend to eat. So. Um, I've got all the links you need in the write-up on the blog under Nerd's Guide to the Galaxy. Go there. If you don't already have an account, create the account with OpenAI. Then get into ChatGPT and start playing with it. Another thing I did real quick, I'm not going to take the time to bring it up on screen, but I just want to mention it, is I said write me uh, 10 topics for blog posts on CFO services. And it came up with 10 ideas. And then I, you could take each idea and say, now write me a blog post on this, and you give it its own title that it gave you. And so this is the thing that people are like kind of getting scared about, like, oh, my God, it's going to write blog posts for me, and it actually does a really good job of writing blog posts. But here's the thing. Don't be scared, because the one thing you should never do is just have chat GPT write the whole blog post and publish that as is. What you'll see is it only generates about a 350 to 400 word blog post. So you'll definitely want to, you know, what you can do is you can you can create an efficiency here by having chat GPT give you that kickstart, but then you go in and embellish and you add and add and add and you can take that 350 word post and, can, and expand it into a 650 to 1200 word post, which is probably ideal for these days for the web. You know, the longer form stuff is uh, doing better as far as written content is concerned. The shorter stuff stuff is viewed as more promotional in nature, most likely. Um, the only exception now being short form videos are very popular because of services like TikTok and, you know, Instagram Reels and all that. But bottom line, use chat GPT to get ideas, use it to get you the kickstart you need, but then you go in and you put your heart and soul into it, which is something chat GPT, as far as I can tell, will never be able to do because it's not a human with a soul, it's a bot, right? So bottom line, don't be scared or worried that chat GPT is going to like replace your job writing stuff um, it's not it will definitely be a tool you can use to help improve your process that's my story and I'm sticking to it so that's how you can create your own AI based accounting system using chat GPT and I'll just recap by saying this is the future, folks. This is not something you should ignore. The sooner you can get into this, the sooner you can get comfortable with this, the better prepared you'll be for what's to come next. I can promise you this is what it's going to look like.